Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back, Kellen here from Droid Life. So this time, we're gonna walk through Honeycomb itself. Okay, we've done gaming, we've done an unboxing of the Zoom, we're working on this full review thing, but part of that being the first Honeycomb tablet ever, we gotta do a Honeycomb walkthrough, at least a brief one to give you guys an idea of, you know, what Honeycomb really looks like, how it works. You know, we're not gonna go into the really dirty details. This could probably take us an hour to really walk through all of it, but we still wanna give you guys an idea you know, the, some of the basic functions of Honeycomb, some of the stuff that we've really enjoyed, you know, in the last three weeks with this device. So uh, let's let's load it up and uh, dive right into it. So anyway, famous is the uh, the lock screen, right? Okay, so we all know the lock screen. Um, it's different than, you know, regular Androids just swipe left to right. And basically all you have to do is just pull it outside the circle. And, or, I mean, you can drag it over to this little, this little lock over here, but really you just have to drag it outside the circle and it unlocks the tablet, okay? So from there, you get right into Honeycomb, and I went with, you know, a, my own custom uh, wallpaper right here, but it has, you know, certain wallpapers already set on there that you've seen and you can download and all that stuff. Um, it comes with five home screens. Okay, you can probably load up Launcher Pro or something on there and get more long, more home screens if you want, but you will probably lose that, that app drawer up there and just some of the overall functionality of Honeycomb. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you do that although I haven't tested that so maybe I should actually but anyway you get five home screens uh, one of the great things about honeycomb is just how smooth it really is although I will say this if you put a live wallpaper on here you can tell that they're not optimized for um, Tegra 2's and Honeycomb because they are a little jittery and I know that sounds ridiculous being a Tegra 2 processor but I would just say that they're not optimized for Honeycomb yet don't blame the Tegra 2 but as you can see with just a standard wallpaper you know, I'm barely touching, moving really slow, and it follows every single move. And you can see we got this sweet, you know, 3D sort of animation. And then if I want to go to another page, I can flick that much, and it actually takes me to the next page. I mean, it doesn't take much. It's really sensitive. You know, it's really smooth. It works. It works in incredibly well. I know that you know it's gotten some some spotty reviews with bugs and stuff like that. Um, I am running the update to 3.0.1. And it really did fix a lot of um, little buggy things that were popping up here and there. Still got some issues, but it is a brand new product. It's never been done before. This is an actual tablet operating system. This is not just a smartphone operating system that's been stretched out to work on a tablet. Okay, you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to just take a bunch of jabs at them, but I'm just saying this is a real tablet operating system, unlike that other one. So anyways, um, if we want to, um, well, let's just go up here. So we got our app. We got our app button up here, which is our app drawer. Okay, so you can get, you can pop that open, and it loads up all of your apps. Okay, and they uh, they go landscape or horizontal rather than vertical like they do on your phone. Um, one of the cool things is this little. It's sort of like a preview of what's next in your app drawer. It's just one of those little cool things that Honeycomb does. So you can see these are the apps that are listed next. So obviously you can tell that's Google Places and that's navigation. If we swipe over. You know, there they are right there. So it gives you this little preview of what your next apps are, which is just kind of a cool thing. You can also sort it by my apps, which is another little tab up there. And these are all the apps I've downloaded. And of course there's all. Another thing you can do is get right into the Android market from here. See there's a little market icon. And one of the cool things about, and I, it sounds weird saying this, but about um, Motorola's Blur is the new version actually has that little market icon up there. So I know we all hate blur, but the new blur actually sort of emulates honeycomb a little bit, and that's one of the ways it does that. So you can hit that, takes you right into the market, which is you know a tablet specific market. We'll come back to that. Um, so anyway, but basics of honeycomb. So that's your app drawer. Okay, down here I should point out that we do have our back button, our home button, and this is our previously used applications button. Okay, so if you tap that button, it gives you your last five. And so this is how the multitasking comes in, okay? So with that, it shows you where you were when you left that last application, and you can punch one, and it takes you right back to where you were, okay? So something else that's real multitasking, true multitasking, okay? So you got those three buttons. On the other side over here, we actually have our notification area. And, you know, in phones, this is up at the top of your phone. In Honeycomb, they keep it down at the bottom. Okay, so you can see I've got weather bug installed, so I have so I have my, uh, let me zoom in on that a little bit. So I got my weather on there. Um, you can see I got email, so I have these Gmail you know, notifications. I have Google Talk conversations, so somebody must have sent me a message. And then I have a, uh, a market notification. I updated my Facebook app, okay? So you can see if I pull that up, I have a little X over here, and I can just tap that X, and then that that's, should go away. You have to hit it right. 
Look at me struggling. Oh, that was, I had a bunch of applications, I'm sorry. So yeah, each time I hit an X, they're going away. So I updated Quadrant. It also says I have updates available, and I can punch that, and it should take me right into the market. And sure enough, it did. But anyway, back to this notification area. And so then you can see I have a calendar item, and go ahead and get rid of that. And you can see they keep going away. One of the faults that some people have talked about with Honeycomb is that with all these notifications, there's not a clear all like you have on your phone. And I will admit that's a little frustrating. Um, hopefully that shows up in a future update. But when you get, you can see I had a whole bunch of apps on there and stuff like that in the update. I had to keep going one by one and Xing. It'd be nice to have a clear all on that. Um, the other thing you can do is um, tap on your clock. And let me go ahead and delete out some of these. Um, and you can see this is weather bug and obviously it's not working correctly, but anyway, that's what that is. Um, and then up here you get your clock. And so we can tap on that to get more options. Um, you can also see that I'm on my Wi-Fi network and then I have 75% battery and there, there, of course there's the date. You can tap on uh, the clock and you get you know your airplane mode, quick toggle, Wi-Fi, lock screen orientation. Um, you can go from auto brightness to non-auto brightness, um, turn your notifications off, and then you can get into your actual settings. Okay. So you see how that works. And now let's zoom out and I'll actually show you what we got in settings here, since settings are one of those big things we like to talk about. Um, over here is it, you know, it's pretty standard, you know, settings menu. Um, you know, you got applications, we can go into applications and we can go manage. And from there, you can see we have downloaded all and running. So it's it's similar to Android. You know, there's there's been some critics out there that have said Honeycomb will never last and will never make it because it's too complicated for the normal user. Well, there's hundreds and thousands and millions of Android users out there, and Honeycomb functions just like regular Android. It just looks a little bit different. It's just made for a tablet. So that argument's ridiculous. And as you can see in your settings, it all works exactly the same. Screen, you know, you've got brightness, auto rotation, your sound you can adjust, privacy you can adjust. I mean, all this stuff's in there. It's just like a normal Android phone. It just looks bigger, okay? And of course, here's the about screen, the famous about screen. And you can see we are running uh, 3.0.1, and there's our zoom. Oh, and HRI 66, okay. So let's go ahead and get out of there. Um, back to the home screen. So up top we've got um, Google Search and you have your microphone button. Okay, so we can go ahead and tap in Search and it pulls up your keyboard. And I'm actually using thumb keyboard. We'll talk about that more in a second. But you can see we can type up here. We can say Droid Life. And right away, it's searching a whole bunch of different things. So you can see it's searching actual Google results. It searched my bookmarks and it searched my applications. So I can launch application, you know, go straight to droidlife.com or I can actually just use search. Okay, so that's kind of sweet. Um, if we don't want to do that, obviously we have voice, you know, voice actions and voice search and all that stuff. We do have a microphone right there. Okay, so we can oh, switch back, buddy orientation switched on me there. Okay, so we can hit the microphone. Droid Life. Let's see if I can find Droid Life. And sure enough, it did. So pop that right up. So you can see the, you know, the voice accuracy is there just like it would be on your regular smartphone. Um, that pulls up the browser. We'll come back to that in a second too. Um, from there though, this is, you know, your, your home screens are like they are on a phone. Okay, so you have apps, you have widgets, and they function just like they would on your phone. You do have a little bit more, um, movement and leeway and you can, you can arrange things a little bit differently but it's still a long press and then you drag things around and put it wherever you want same thing with your apps you long press drag you know put them wherever you want I'm gonna zoom in and see if we can see this but if I long press on one an actual grid pops up um, it's sort of tough to see but see right there there's a little plus so you actually do get a little grid so it tells you you know where you can place it you can see it's sort of dropping it's sort of dropping a shadow back behind the app. Okay, so I can put that wherever I want. Okay, so that's one of the, uh, oh, and there's a notification. So you can see that's how notifications look when they pop up from my buddy Wade. And uh, yeah, let's move this widget back over here. Um, let's say we wanna just add something completely new to the home screen. So you can long press on a blank spot just like you would um, on your phone. You can also hit the uh, plus button up here in the top right. Hit plus and that gets you there. Okay, from here you have 
a bunch of different options. First of all, you can see your five screens and how they're all laid out. And then we have widgets, app shortcuts, wallpapers, and more. Okay, so you have all these different options you can play with. Okay, and widgets are all laid out down here. So you just flick left and right until you find a widget you want. And let's say we want to do books, because books is one of those new interactive widgets. So basically you just grab it and drag it into whichever home screen you want. You can see each one's lighting up. And then if you decide where you want it, you just hold it on that screen for a second, it zooms in. And then it also lets you decide where you want to put it. Okay, so let's just put it right there. And then you can see it just populated right there. And let's say I want to put, let's just find something else on here. Let's say I want to put Facebook on there. So I grab that, go up, hover, and I can just let it go right there. Okay, and then let's say, oh, look, oh, Facebook crashed. Facebook does not play all that well with Honeycomb. They need to uh, update that. That's not a Honeycomb error. That's a Facebook problem. Okay, anyway, so now we can just tap on the screen over here and we can see it. So there's my books right there that I purchased. I did not buy Alice in Wonderland, by the way. Did buy the book of basketball and Kitchen Confidential, but anyway. And then, of course, there's your Facebook widget. Now, you know, we can move these. We can drag them up to the trash and get rid of them if we want. We can highlight this screen over here and it'll keep taking us to new screens so we can move it to another screen. So this is like basic, you know, Android functionality that, you know, we've seen on phones and it carries over onto the tablet. So again, this is not, you know, some brand new philosophy or something like that. It's, it just looks different. It looks polished or totally different than your phone, but it functions exactly the same way. So if you know how to use an Android phone, you can use Honeycomb. Okay, and so then we've got these active widgets. Okay, so as you can see, I can flick through this one and look at all the books I own, and then I can tap on one, and it'll take me right into the uh, Google Books app. And... For some reason, it is not loading that well. So, you know, there are little bugs, not gonna lie. Do have little bugs, but anyway, here you go. Back to the book. You can see it flips pages really nicely. So this is the uh, Google Books app. Pretty sweet, right? Okay, anyway, let's go back. Actually, I do wanna show you that again. Let's go back in there. And while you're in a book, I don't know if you'll notice the R buttons down here are back home and all those buttons. As you flip pages, the notification bar actually sort of hides. Okay, the notification bar actually never fully goes away in any application that you're in, but it does um, sort of hide. It dims the buttons. You can see, oh, let's see if we can zoom in on this. There are three dots on there. You see those? So those are actually our buttons. And if we tap, they actually come back. But as you're reading your book, see, they go away. But as soon as I tap, they come right back. Okay, so it's just another one of those nice little adjustments that uh, Honeycomb does for you. Okay. Anyway, let's get back out of there. Let's go back home, play with some home screens. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a YouTube app on here. You can flip through videos, pick one, and it takes you right into the YouTube app. And, you know, the YouTube app itself is pretty sweet. Hey, what's you got going on, guys? It's Sam Rickshaws, and uh, I just wanted to quickly let you guys know before this video we'll starts. Watch this. So, as you can see, video, if we tap on it, we can go, it's on, you can select HQ, pause it, or you can go full screen with it. Since we're in here, we might as well do this. And let me turn this guy down. Um, another cool thing is with the volume. You can see I'm volume up and down over here on the left, but I can also touch that and drag the volume up and down as well. Okay, so let's mute that kid. Okay, so video quality, obviously pretty good, as long as you know the YouTube person's uploaded a nice video. You can pause it. You can drag the uh, bar along down here and pick whatever part of the video you want. Um, you can go out of HQ, you can share it up here. There's some more options about saving, flagging, all that stuff. Um, we can go back to YouTube by hitting this button up here. It takes us into the, uh, the main YouTube page, which is sort of this like 3D wheel looking YouTube. Um, you can look at your channel if you're logged in. And there's the uh, Droid Life page actually. And this is actually a review we just did on gaming that actually just uploaded a second ago. Um, but anyway, as you can see, you know, you can look at the page down here, description, all that stuff, tags. Let's just go back. We don't necessarily need to watch that. There's all our videos, all kinds of stuff going on here. You can browse. There's home. Okay, so that's a YouTube app. Now we've gone in there. But yeah, back to these. Uh, you can flip through these. You can see this is the CNN app. 
You can flip through all these to look at different articles or videos you want to watch. Just got more applications over there. Um, we've also got the uh, Gmail widgets with uh, scrolling um, email stuff in there. Um, scrolling bookmarks widget that is not playing well. Oh, there we go. So you can see that. And then, of course, we have a calendar one that you can flip through to. And you can set those up for each of your calendars, each of your email addresses, whatever you want to do. Okay, so there's all kinds of cool stuff going on here. Um, that's basically your home stuff for, for Honeycomb. From there, um, let's say we want to add something just from our app drawer. Let's say we want to add Angry Birds. Long press on that, and you get a preview down here. Um, then you can drag it around and put it wherever you want. Brings you back into you know, your apps. You can just go home, and you know there it is. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, so, you know, that's just basically a quick walk through the outside. Um, let's just dive into uh, some other things, like the browser. This is a pretty big deal. Okay, so browser, um, obviously a home page is set up to be Android Live. Okay, but the browser sort of functions like Chrome. You know, you got tabs. You know, we can keep popping up tabs just by doing that. It pops up a new tab each time. Okay, you can close them. By tapping the little X, um, you have your bookmarks and search, um, all these buttons up here. Um, down there, you can still see we got notification bar if you want to get around. Um, there is a settings menu, and I do want to show you in labs. There's this in labs, there's this thing called quick controls. Excuse me. There's this thing called quick controls, and you can see when you enable that, it actually takes away that top bar. Um, but what it allows you to do is swipe from the right with your thumb and you get these quick controls. And so you can pop around to stuff faster. You can go back, you can refresh, you can look at your bookmarks. It'll actually let you search for pages and see it pops up your search bar down there. So uh, that's just sort of one of those neat little, little tablet experience things on there. Okay, let's go back. <clears throat> okay, so that's the browser. Um, here's Pinch and Zoom. Pinch and Zoom works pretty well. Um, I do have Flash, the uh, leaked APK on mine so these are probably flash banners um, so you can see the browser still works even with a beta flash installed it still works really well let's uh, let's see if we can find a video for you and show you flash really quick in browser now mind you this is basically a beta it wasn't supposed to be released and it is released so it's not going to work a hundred percent awesomely but it still does work pretty well so let's go ahead and see this Kevin Bacon Logitech video See if we can get it to load up here. Okay, so there's a YouTube video embedded, and with Flash 10.2 on your Zoom, this is how it looks. Assuming my Wi Fi is powerful enough to uh, download the content. And there you go. And I have it muted. Z O B E N K. Favorite actor. Well, that's easy. Kevin Bacon, obviously. I mean, he's the best actor in the world. Here you go, Kev. Actually, I, I do. I do a Kevin Bacon impression. This valley just one long smorgasbord. bar. They're <laughs> under the ground. Tremors. Anyway, so you can yeah. see that works. Flash 10.2 actually works pretty well. I've tried um, going like to congregate in some gaming sites. Didn't have a whole lot of luck, but it will play embedded YouTube videos. Um, so, you know, this is the browser. There's it's it, you know it's like Chrome a little bit so like I said earlier but you know you can open up new tabs you can go into your bookmarks and you know you can open up like let's go to ESPN you can open up ESPN and so you have multiple tabs going so you can do that I mean you know it's a fully featured browser it's not you know and with Flash you know it's a real browser it's a real browsing experience and all that stuff so we should have Flash by this Friday so you know once you guys get that there's really no excuse not to uh, look at this browser as being the best in the business. So anyway, we'll go ahead and close that. There is, uh, there's your browser. Um, let's say though, let's go back to this multitasking thing though. So we're in our browser and let's say we're, we, we need to get somewhere else or to an app we were previously using. If you tap that little button down there like I showed you, we can get back to say YouTube or if we want to go to YouTube, watch a video and go back to our browser, we can, qu we can quickly go back to our browser. At least I thought I did that. Yeah, I must have mistapped that. So back to our browser, back to YouTube. So you can see we can flip tasks really, really quickly. And you know, that's one of the uh, that's one of the great things about Android and Honeycombs lets you do that. Okay. So uh, browser, I showed you YouTube. 
And I know I said I was going to show you guys uh, how to switch keyboards, so I better go ahead and do that. So if you pull up, this is you know another one of those. I keep saying this is this cool thing the Honeycomb does, but there's so many cool things built in. So anyway, I'm using thumb keyboard, which gives you this really easy way to type with your thumbs. Okay, so I highly recommend you get that. It costs like a couple of bucks, but a thumb keyboard. But let's say you want to use, you know, Bluetooth keyboard, you know, like this guy. Or let's say you just want to use the stock Android keyboard. Down here at the bottom, we'll zoom in on that for a second. See this little keyboard button? I'm going to go ahead and tap that, and it pops up your keyboard options. Okay, so in the notification area, you get, so now we have these, uh, this keyboard section, and we can choose back to the uh, regular keyboard and you can see it popped up okay or we can go ahead and choose well if i had uh the bluetooth keyboard connected you would have another option up here that says turn physical keyboard on off okay so that so that gives you uh you know keyboard options so and there you go so now you know you can type away on that not really a big fan of this keyboard like i said thumb keyboard is my dog so uh i highly recommend you check that out too but yeah another thing built in um, keyboard. Oh, and I should probably show you that too. So there's a button over here if you need your keyboard to go away. Thumb keyboard has one built in that'll hide your keyboard. Um, but you can also hit this down arrow. So your back arrow turns into a down arrow. So anyway, that's the uh, new Honeycomb keyboard. Um, let's go ahead and go into the market since there is a tablet specific market. When you get in here, now the tablet, the Honeycomb market needs some work, not gonna lie. It looks really pretty, but there's some stuff in there that you know, I would like to see adjusted. But anyway, you can see you can scroll up and down here. They do have uh, featured tablet apps you can go into, and this is you know a good place to start when you first get your tablet to uh, see if there's anything you know new out there. Um, Google Body, I believe, has an update which I'm going to show you in just a second. <clears throat> um, but you can search from in here. So you can search from in here and type you know Droid Life, and hopefully it pulls up the Droid Life app. And there's a wallpaper app, there's the Droid Life app. So, you see that works pretty well. Um, one of the things I want to show you is in the My Apps section. When you pull up My Apps, you can see I've got, I've got some updates over here. So it shows you what's installed. Let's slide this over a little bit. So it shows you what you've got installed over here, and then if you have updates, they pop up top and it says you have updates available. So if you want to update stuff, all you do is just tap this button right here and it should start updating every single one of those apps. And sure enough it is. And Google Body Update, I wonder if that includes the mail anatomy for those interested. Um, so one of the cool things is that it shows you, you know, the app that's getting updated, but it doesn't provide you with enough information for me though. I like that it shows you, you know, like an app preview over here, but I would also like it if it showed all the details. But in order to get all the details, you actually have to hit see details and then it takes you to the actual app page. I wish that worked a little bit differently. I wish there was still more information on there, but can't have it all, I guess, right? So in the, in the market though, when you're on an actual app page, you can see we have the, the less and more button. You got your previews of stuff, you got reviews, and I do not believe you can leave a comment yet, which is sort of frustrating. Um, more information on developers, related apps, you know, all that stuff. So that's basically what an app page looks like. And let's just show you another one like Google Maps. So you can see the big, beautiful picture up top. We have our more section. We have our what's new section if they've updated the app in a while. There's more of those screen screenshots which are scrollable. There's the videos, you know, so you can see video. And somebody actually rated Google Maps one star. Can you all see that? That is ridiculous. Freezes a lot and needs full screen. You gotta be kidding me. Google Maps is like the greatest app in the history of anything. And that person gave it one star. So anyway, that's what that's what app pages look like. Um, you can share them from here, so you can see you get your list of things to share them in. Um, you do have some more options up here, like clear your history. You can look at your purchase history. You can actually switch accounts. Um, you can switch accounts and actually go by email address. So if you have certain apps that are tied to certain email addresses, like say for some reason you kept switching your main Gmail address when you load up new phones or something, you can actually switch between those, which is kind of cool. This is the first, first device, I believe, that allows you to do that so quickly. Um, you can also obviously shop for books in here now. Okay, so we have books in there. I wish they would do magazines, but they don't yet. Okay, and this stuff's all scrollable up here. All right, so that's basically the market. Um, I did update all those apps, so I will show you the notification area again. You can see we got app updates. That's the uh, market, so it says four applications updated. And I just X that, and that goes away. Okay. 
So that is your new Android market for tablets. Let's see what else is uh, brand spanking new in here. Um, the CNN app is an actual tablet specific app. You'll want to grab that one if you're into uh, news and all that stuff. Um, one of the cool things is the iReport. So if you're like running around with your Zoom, you can go to iReport, film a video and upload it to CNN's website, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now I want to cruise in and uh, let's actually show you the music app. So the music app is actually pretty sweet. Um, in new and recent view, you can see it gives you sort of a uh, an album chart sort of flip. I don't really know how to describe that, but it's really nice. As you can see, you can flip through it, and it's fast, and lets you scroll through your whole library. If you actually go into an album, you can see you got your whole album listed there, and you can go ahead and crank up the tunes. As you can see, it gets pretty loud. Um, from there, you got some other options. You can, you know, tap on, you know, the song, add it to a playlist. Um, your album, you can do all that stuff. If we go back, and obviously it stays playing down here, and we can tap on, get back to this new and recent, but then you can go from there and you can go and do playlists, you can go by albums, and this is where we get that sort of honeycomb album look that we've seen from that leaked app that was out there. So you can see that whole like 3D sort of gallery look. And also, uh, if we get out of there, you can see we now have headphones in our uh, notification bar. We can tap on that and get back into the album if we want or you can go ahead and pause it and close it just to close off your uh, your music. Okay, so from there, let's go back and one last time to the app drawer and see if we got any cool. Um, contacts and calendar definitely overhauled. I'm not gonna show you that because again, that's there's a lot of personal info in there. Um, Google Earth actually works really well, but Google Maps, I will show you this because Google Maps is pretty, is pretty sweet on here. Um, what it does is uh, it, it sort of pulls up this menu over here on the side. So, um, you know, you can, you can scroll around, obviously, and you can pinch to zoom and all that stuff. But um, it lets you, whenever you need something, so like let's say we want labs. Um, you can see it pops up that menu, but I'm trying to get, oh, let's go layers. So you can see with layers, that pops up. That's not exactly what I'm talking about there. What am I talking about? There we go. Places. So there's certain things like places, and I believe navigation does this too. Pops up a window over here, so you can still scroll around over here, but you also have this to look at. So from there, you know, we could go in and search for stuff. Um, if we do, if we wanted to do navigation to somewhere, let's do. Uh, there's got to be something good out there. Luca, great restaurant in Portland. But you can see as I'm tapping on these different places, it's changing, you know, the information over here. So I still have my whole map, but it's doing this. And you know, that uh, that's only available on the uh, tablet version. So that's kind of cool. And if you go into navigation, it'll take you over there and all that stuff too. But um, yeah, so it just gives you a slightly, slightly different view of it. And then of course, if we want to zoom in and get 3D, we can do that too. And we can zoom out a little bit. And then of course you can spin around buildings and look at all that stuff. Look at beautiful Portland, Oregon, which is raining as usual. Um, so yeah, so that's the tablet version of Maps. It's it's definitely, it's fun. You know, I've taken a couple of trips using it already and uh, it performs really well and it's just nice to have a, a giant map like that, a giant screen like that on there. So um, we'll go back in and we'll take one last look and then we will end this honeycomb demo. Um, one of the big problems I will talk about is there are no real tablet Twitter apps yet. Um, TweetDeck does a uh, decent job. Um, as you can see, it doesn't look awful in here, but it doesn't really look like it was built specifically for Honeycomb. So we are still waiting on an actual, you know, an actual tablet market or a tablet Twitter app. But you know, hopefully we get that in due time. So. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, there's Google Talk and stuff like that. Again, that's you know all pretty you know private information. I'm not really show you, but yeah, this is the this is uh, this is Honeycomb. And as you can see, we've ran into a couple little bugs here and there, but nothing really all that major. You know, it's really smooth. 
Um, and this could be just 3.0.1 and everyone else that reviewed it was only doing it on 3.0 and maybe that was a problem. Maybe 3.0.1 fixed a lot more bugs than most of us, you know, thought that it was going to. So anyway, we're going to have a full review up of the actual Zoom itself, but this is the Honeycomb walkthrough. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you got questions, drop in the comments. We'll try to get back to you. And uh, actually, should have ended that right there. I forgot about the camera. How could I forget about the camera? Camera app. Okay. So camera app. Let's go ahead and slide Mr. Android under there. So you can see here's our uh, control panel over here. And all we have to do is click on the button right there. Take a picture of him. And then, of course, we want to do video. You can hit the video button. Now it switches to video. So now we're recording Mr. Andy the Android. With Android written on his butt. And we can go ahead and stop that. So now we recorded that video. And we can switch back to regular camera once it processes that. And then of course you can uh, flip and use the uh, front camera, which bring Andy back around. There he is. So there's front camera. And you can see it actually does a pretty nice job. Okay, so flip that back around. And that's your camera app. Actually works pretty well. It doesn't take the greatest still shots on the uh, planet, but it does a pretty decent job. So um, anyway, yeah, that's Honeycomb. It's a pretty, pretty general walkthrough, and this video is extra long. So we're going to cut it off there. Like I said, if you got questions, hit us up at the blog. And uh, droidlife.com, we're out. Peace.